Namo Buddhaya, this is Apinav and I welcome you to this channel. Now we continue the, uh, the, my learnings on uh, Dhammapada verses and uh, uh, in this video I will cover from, chap uh, from verse 81 to 100. Right? Uh, the, if you can see the entire Dhammapada playlist that is available on this channel for the entire list of Dhammapada videos. Right? This, uh, uh, the Dhammapada that I am referring the verses, I am referring the translation by Eknath Iswaran from this book, the Dhammapada by Eknath Iswaran. It's a very good book. Highly mm -hmm. recommend you can purchase it. And for those in the Indian subcontinent, the, there is another version which is much cheaper. So uh, it's available on Amazon uh, uh, and other places. So you can buy it online. It's a highly recommended book for study of the Dhammapada. Right? So let us start verse 81 uh, where we continue the discussion uh, where Buddha talks about, Buddha is talking about the people who are wise people, right? Or what are the characteristics of those people, right? So in the earlier, like 60 to, uh, like the uh, 60 to 80, we understood uh, about the characteristics of the immature people. Now we can, uh, we, Buddha talks about the characteristics of the wise people. So when we talk, when Buddha talked about characteristics of immature people, we have to, uh, like, stay away from the company of those people on the on our path. Right? Be mindful that we don't enter into a company of those people because they'll pull us down. And second, we also recognize the traits of immature traits in us. When we talk about the company of wise people, we look into us for cultivating those traits. We both have traits. See, we have traits we, of wise people as well as immature people. It's upon us what, what, what seeds we water. Right? So, when we discuss about wise people, it's about looking into those traits in us, cultivating those traits and also associating, trying to associate with people who are wise, who are saints, right? Because those people can, can you know, help us in achieving our goal of reaching Nirvana, right? Okay, so, uh, verse 81, As a solid rock cannot be moved by the wind, the wise are not shaken by praise or blame. When they, verse 82, When they listen to the words of the Dharma, their minds become calm and clear like waters of the still lake, right? So the wise ones are those who are like a rock which is not shaken by the wind. They are not shaken either by praise or by blame. If someone praises them or someone blames them, they recognize that these are just transitory things. They are just arising and falling, right? And so neither praise makes them, you know, that I am something and everything, nor blame takes them down. They take everything with equanimity. When they listen to the words of the dharma, their mind becomes clean and clear, cl calm and clear, like waters of a still lake. That's what uh, just uh, uh, it, it's like said. How do you, how should you read the dharma, or how should you listen to the dharma? Like there are dharma talks that are given in all the various monasteries, and you know, by the learned spiritual masters and the Buddhist monks. So it's like said that let the dharma be a rain, and let it wash over you. Let you be washed by the rain of the dharma. See, you will only, you and me, we will only take that much as our capacity is, as our consciousness is evolved. For someone, he can gather the deepest meaning and quickly implement it. But if the someone is not that at, at that level, he will be able to only understand a bit or he may also not understand. So, important thing is not to criticize the dharma, criticize the words of the masters, the monks and the, uh, the, the enlightened ones. Because... Why not? Because we have not achieved that at that level of understanding what from which they are communicating. See, I can only understand, that's why I always say in my videos, I am only sharing from my limited perspective, from the level that I know. We all need to practice at our end, but keep ingesting dharma, keep like we like we eat food two times a day, three times a day. Some people even eat three more than three times a day, right? Four times a day. Similar way, we need to eat some dharma food every day, right? <laughs> dharma food, I've just invented it right now, right? Dharma food, right? Like like you have in, in your, you know, meal, a proper balanced meal that you have, whichever country you are in, right? We are all one family, right? So, also have a dharma meal. Maybe in the evening, you can spend some time to have your dharma meal. And just ingest whatever, just let the rain of the dharma wash you. And slowly, slowly, as our consciousness evolves, like today, if I'm reading a, a Dharma Sutra, it, it will have a different meaning. And five years down the line, if I practice diligently, then it will have a very defined, different meaning. Right? 
dharma speaks to us right in the ways that we can listen in the best way right okay uh, let's come to verse number 83 good people keep on walking whatever happens they do not speak vain words and are the same in good fortune and bad verse 84 which is linked with 83 if one desires neither children nor wealth nor power nor success by unfair means no such a one to be good wise and virtuous right so tendencies of good wise people they keep on walking on the spiritual path right whatever happens they don't yearn for any special experiences or any pra- praise or any spiritual powers no you know it can be like when you when we are on the spiritual path there may be years where nothing happens and there are like um, days or months where amazing progress can happen what we have to do is we when we choose one path we have to just keep walking on that path without desiring if you see if we are in the spiritual path the dharma the, the uh, on the path given by the buddha if we are aiming for any like a like buddha has covered in the earlier uh, verses also if we are aiming, aiming for any spiritual powers or the company of gods or that we should bo- get born in some some wise uh, 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 places and if that is the end goal then that's not the right practice our practice is one practice what buddha said of liberation being, being free from birth and death so just keep walking keep faith on your master on your teacher and keep walking they do not speak vain words right speech one of the noble eightfold paths right speech and they are the same in good fortune and bad fortune equanimity whether it's good whether it's bad so that's why it's important and you know we should when the times are bad we should not feel hopeless when the times are good then also we should not remember our, we should not forget our bad times right because those bad times we need to keep remembering because they will help us stay grounded otherwise we will keep flying right here and there right so everything realizing everything is impermanent everything there is nothing will last everything will will just collapse right being in that understanding okay if one desires no desiring neither children nor wealth nor power not success by unfair means means basically i will just let things come my way i will do my duty right as a lay person what is my duty i have my duty towards earning uh, uh, money through the rightful means and i will exert my effort but and then i will not desire that this should come or that should come or i will be free from that so what you know my understanding is that if we are free from our desires it takes a lot of pressure off our head we just keep our efforts and let other people desire let other people make their efforts let other people kind of uh, crave for things let them do no why we get sucked into their you know thing and we also want to desire because everybody around us is desiring if everybody is you know it's like uh, going down the wrong path then doesn't make mean that we also do that was 85 and 86 few are those who reach the other shore most people keep running up and down the shore how beautiful but those who follow the dharma when it has been well taught will reach the other shore hard to reach beyond the power of death right so buddha says that only a few people or like if there are like 10 100 practicing only 10 will reach the shore few people reach the shore because they practice diligently rest 90 are just with they are on the shore and they are doing up and down so people who get stuck in you know useless rituals and you know they make you know idols and everything and you know of buddha and they worship the buddha or you know praying that it should give them that is not what buddha's teaching is so that if they those 90 people they will remain in this shore and doing all this and that but then there are people who really practice diligently so we have to be amongst those 10 people who cross the shore master has given the teaching master has given us the tools master has given us the life jacket it is upon you us that we wear the life jacket and we swim because if we don't swim if we don't like follow the path of the dharma then we will not reach the other shore and if you are just stuck in lot of things or rituals and everything on this shore and asking for pray praise and everything then will remain on this shore 
master's teaching will not make any use for us. But those who follow the dharma when it has been well taught. So here Buddha is actually using the word when it has been well taught. So Buddha gave the knowledge and now Buddha is no more physically with us but he is in energy form, he is there. Buddhas and all the Buddhas and all the Bodhisattvas there are there in the energy form helping all of us. But if we have not, if, it, if we have not learned from in the proper way, that's why I always insist and I believe that we should go back to the earliest teachings of the Buddha and not confuse us, confuse ourselves with a lot of newer traditions and you know newer teachings which do not are deviating from the core aspect of Buddha's teachings. So we need to go back to the texts like Dharm, Dhammapada, where, which are which Buddha actually spoke. So what happened was that there was a uh, Buddha spoke these texts were recorded in discourses, and then there were other teachings and other schools in Buddhism that kind of expanded and developed on the teachings of the Buddha. They are not the teachings; they are basically an uh, analysis and interpretation of the teachings in their own way. So then there are what have there are various you know Buddha uh, Buddha's teachings have and. That may be because too, they wanted to you know, adapt the Buddha's teaching to that particular place where the teaching had to be given. and you know. But, that, but then my only point is, we have to decide. If we are on Buddha's path, we have to follow the earliest teachings of the Buddha, which are given in the sutras, the Pali Tipitika, the sutras. And, uh, and these are widely available like Sutta Centers, S-U-T-T-A Central dot net. I refer that site for the, the, the text of the sutras. Right. So, and there are many dhamma dot dhamma dhamma talks dot org. There are various sub such sites. I'll make a separate video on that. But look at the discourses. Then there are such books that are available. Right. You can purchase these books, Dhammapada, and lot of books are also available for free. Also, you can search on Buddha Net dot net website. You will find. So look at the right teachings. Don't get stuck in the teachings which are not of the Buddha, right? And when the person does that, he will reach the other shore, hard to reach, definitely it's hard to reach. If it's easy to reach, then it would no, not require any effort. And beyond the power of death, right? Liberating us from the, pow the power of death. Verse 88, 7, 88, 89, they are together. They leave darkness behind and follow the light. They leave darkness behind and follow the light. They give up home, home and leave the pleasures behind. Calling nothing their own, they purify their hearts and rejoice. Well trained in the seven fields of enlightenment, their senses discipline and free from attachments, they live in freedom full of light. So here what Buddha says is they leave darkness. So we have to decide. There is a dark side on us and there is a good side in us. Both sides are there and we, as we raise our awareness level, both these sides, they will present ourselves. Especially the dark side comes up. Because the dark side now knows that we are capable of dealing with it. Our hatred, our anger. So we have to leave that path of darkness. Not water it. Let them be in the latent, our unconscious. But follow the path of light, which is follow the path of dharma. They give up home and leave pleasures behind. So this, what I understand is, for, from the lay person's perspective is, they give up home and leave. That means, we don't give up our home as such, but we Continue on the path of the dharma, we daily devote ourselves to the study of the dharma and we follow the right path in whatever we do. Buddha never ever said that for liberation you need to leave your leave your home or for your place. Right? So Buddha's never was Buddha's teaching is that you have to become a monk and only then. Buddha placed a lot of emphasis on the institutions like marriage, the family life and everything. Right? So being in that family life, but not being in that family life, right? not being attached to the sense pleasures, we need to continue. Calling nothing their own. We doesn't, don't call anything our own. Do, no attachments. We purify our hearts, our rejoice. We train in the seven fields of, or seven factors of enlightenment, that is, as it is called. I'll make a separate video on that. Senses are disciplined and free of attachment. They live in freedom, full of light. That is 89. Then we come to nine, 90, verse nine, 90. Sorry. Okay. So here Buddha says, verse 90, 
they have completed their voyage now now we talk start talk about about the saintly beings right saints they have completed their voyage they have gone beyond sorrow the fetters of life have fallen from them and they live in full freedom right so the, so they have completed their saints they have completed their voyage gone beyond sorrow fetters the chains of life have fallen from them and they live in full freedom verse 91 the thoughtful strive always they have no fixed abode but leave home like swans from the lake right they have no fixed abode but leave home like swans right keep traveling right okay verse 92 like the flight of the birds in the sky the path of selfless is hard to follow they have no possessions but live on arms in a world of freedom like the flight of birds in the sky their path is hard to follow with their senses under control temperate in eating they know the meaning of freedom so here buddha is talk, talking about those who have entirely devoted their lives for the practice so they have no possession they live on arms they don't have any possessions they are free their senses are under control and they are moderate in their eating and they know the meaning of freedom verse 94 the buddha says even the gods envy the saints whose senses obey them like well trained horses and who are free from pride verse 95 says patient like the earth they stand like a threshold they are pure like a lake and without mud and they are free from the cycle of birth and death so buddha is talking about the qualities of the liberated ones the saints even the gods envy them why because the gods also know that they cannot hear the dharma in the way that they that those in the human realm are can understand and and the, the way they they can be free in this realm when the gods envy them whose senses obey them like well trained horses free from pride patient like the earth patience purity like a lake without a mud free from cycle of birth and death verse 94 96 97 says wisdom has stilled their minds and their thoughts words and deeds are filled with peace freed from illusion and from personal ties they have renounced the world of appearance to find the reality they have reached the highest this is all the qualities of the wise beings 98 99 they make holy wherever they dwell in village or forest on on land or at sea with their senses at peace and minds full of joy they make the forest holy so that means one is that we become influenced by the conditions that we are living but the conditions of people that we are associated with the people who are enlightened who are wise very wise they start influencing the place where they go for example it is said about the buddha that wherever the buddha traveled those places even kilometers kilometers you know uh, 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 there in that radius the 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 thorns they become they became like uh, the the prick of that thorn they, that went right they, they become soft right so that is how they become they wherever they go they make that place holy right so we come to verse number 100 and we'll close here better than the speech of a thousand vain words is one thoughtful word which brings peace to the mind better than a speech of thousand vain words is a one thoughtful word so which be so we need to think about what we speak think right think kind think or say which is kind say which is sweet which brings peace in mind to the person who hears which is the right speech the one of the paths of the noble eightfold path right so this is it 81 to 100 we have covered after this we will continue with 101 i hope uh, it helped you in some way in your practice if you have any views thoughts feedback please do mention in the comment section and uh, i'm thoroughly enjoying these videos making these videos about these teachings and i am also learning as i make these videos i hope you are also finding value some value uh, thank you so much for watching this video thank you namo buddhaye namo buddhaye